Thanks for listening to the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry, here to help educate, motivate, and put you on the right path to take control of your health through weekly discussions on topics in the medical field, public health arena, and in your community. And now your host, Dr. Barry. And welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Lunch and Learn with Dr. Barry. I'm your host, Dr. Barry Pierre, your favorite board-certified internist, founder of Pierre Medical Consulting, helping you empower yourself for better health with the number one podcast for patient advocacy here on the Lunch Learn with if you're truly Dr. Barry. And today we bring you a special guest on a special topic. For those who have been rocking with me from pretty much way back when, you know that uh, a big thing with me has always been mental health and the importance of mental health, especially uh, on the total body health-wise. Because I, I and I talk to, so I say this all the time that you know I can give you all the medications I want I can you know prescribe all the regimens I can but I understand that if I don't make sure your mental health is in order it's not going to matter right like your blood pressure isn't going to be controlled your diabetes isn't going to be controlled and mentally you just aren't there to want to take control of those things right so I always stress mental health and of course obviously my wife being a therapist makes me a little bit biased but I truly believe that the importance of uh, getting our mental health together is you know paramount and i think that's why they dedicate a whole month especially depending on when you listen to this episode a whole month uh, to mental health awareness and just really understanding the, the stigma understanding that there's help and i knew i could not do this episode any justice right without bringing someone who not only specializes in mental health but has really taken that to the next level with the formation of an entire directory a podcast books everything under the sun kind of related to the brand of mental health so this episode we have dr joy hardy bradford who is a licensed psychologist she's a speaker media personality and of course the host of the popular mental health podcast therapy for black girls her work focuses on making mental health topics more relevant and accessible for black women and specializes in creating spaces for black women to have a fuller and healthier relationship with themselves along with some others and she's been featured god guys she's been featured almost everywhere she's been featured on the o in i guess in o or i guess that's the oh the oprah magazine see i didn't even know that forbes bustle black enterprise teen vogue refinery 29 essence magazine i mean she currently lives in uh Atlanta, Georgia, and now with her husband and two sons. So uh, it's definitely uh, a guest of honor and, you know, one that I've admired for the past couple of years. So, of course, when this topic came up, uh, mental health and we were going on deciding like, hey, who could really, you know, bring that extra umph to the lunch learning community? The list was very short. And of course, she was on the top of it. Right. So, again, get ready for another amazing episode here on the Lunch Learn with Dr. Barry. If you have not had a chance, make sure you subscribe to the podcast leave a five-star review and obviously tell a friend to tell a friend that hey uh, we're talking about mental health we're talking about therapy we're talking about getting ourselves together if we want to end this new year uh, like the way it needs to end right thank you and have a blessed day This episode is brought to you by the Lunch and Learn Community Store, where we are living out the motto, empower yourself for better health. In the Lunch and Learn Community Store, you can get your favorite t-shirts, ebooks, as well as other related products by Dr. Barry. Head over to shop.drpiersblog.com and get a chance to get 10% off your first purchase by using the coupon code EMPOWER10. Again, shop.drpiersblog.com. Live out the motto, empower yourself for better health. All right, Lunch Learn community, again, you heard an amazing introduction from a person who I've admired from afar and I even got the chance to admire up close. Uh, she's a, a friend of my wife's and I was able to kind of sneak in from my like, friendship <laughs> by association. Definitely thankful, you know, for to talk about such an important topic. Of course, I'm biased. I believe mental health is one of the essential things in medicine in general that I know, you know, if your mental health ain't together, it don't matter what I do with your blood pressure. It don't matter what I do with your cholesterol, your diabetes. Like if your mental health ain't 
there, it's always going to be a problem. And of course, my wife being a mental health therapist, make sure she presses that bias and make sure I'm always on my P's and Q's. As we celebrate this month, Mental Health Awareness Month, I said, you know what? We, we had a short list of names of people we wanted to get in and get on the show and kind of talk and educate the lunch learning community on such an important topic that I think everyone, again, when, when you're doing your wellness exams, uh, you know, I think that should be one of the first questions, which actually and now that it's starting to become you know, for a lot of different reasons, but we'll, we can talk about that later. Dr. Joy, thank you for joining this episode of Lunch Learn. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Barry. So Dr. Joy, when we when we talk about mental health and you know, I've I've talked about it ad nauseum on uh, the episode, the, the show just in general, because, you know, I believe in its importance. And, and again, like I said, my wife's a therapist, so, you know, she, she definitely makes sure she stresses it on me. But as an outpatient clinical physician, as an inpatient clinical physician, and, and I see the, the different ranges of what happens when it's not put together. And again, for those in the lunch community, again, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Like, I know you guys love facts, right? So, of course, we're going to kind of hit you with a lot of home facts. But again, I really want to make sure, you know, we really kind of pay attention to, you know, who who we got on the show uh, today. Because again, this is, you know, a special person, uh, definitely in our eyes, especially when we come to the topic of mental health awareness. So Dr. Joe, before we get into all that, you know, I talked a little bit about you in your bio, but could you explain, you know, to people, you know, lunch away community, who you are, why you do the things that you do and why you're so amazing? <laughs> well, thank you for that opportunity. <laughs> I always appreciate a chance to share more about what I'm, what I got going on. So I am a licensed psychologist in Georgia. Most of my career, has been working in college mental health, which I still have a, a very soft spot in my heart for because I love college students and still have a few of them in my practice. But my job full time now really is the Therapy for Black Girls podcast, as well as the therapist directory that is also housed on the Therapy for Black Girls website. And so, you know, the Therapy for Black Girls mission is really to make mental health topics more relevant and accessible for Black women and girls. And so all of the content that we put out, all the conversations that we have with our community are centering around around helping Black women and girls to prioritize their mental health. And so the fact that I get to do this as like my work is like still a, a surprise to me because it feels like so much fun that I don't even consider it work sometimes. I love it. And again, and again we're definitely going to, we'll dedicate a good portion on just the therapy for Black girls. Cause I, like I'm so amazed at a mission. And I'm pretty sure when you first started, and like I said, we will talk about it. Like when you first started, it probably wasn't a mission that was well-traveled. Right? I'm pretty sure you were probably one of the first to kind of do it. So I definitely can't wait to kind of get in to talk about specifically, you know, the therapy for black girls and just that brand and that imprint in general. When we talk about mental health awareness, month, guys, you know, the Shilling community, you know, I, again, I know you guys love facts, right? So we're just going to give you some uh, unfortunate, right? And I hate these, fact, these have these facts out here, but unfortunate facts that are out there that really kind of drive home the point why we need to have a whole month. And really, like I said, every month, like I said, for every disease that has this month, it really is a 12 month thing, but you know, you, you got to celebrate when you celebrate it. So from a mental health standpoint, one of five adults in the U.S., will experience some type of mental health condition in a given year, right? That's one in five. About 47 million adults face, you know, mental health illnesses on a daily basis, right? So again, just from a number standpoint, this isn't something that every now and then person may foster. A lot of people suffer from this disease process in, in that regards. Half of all lifetime mental health conditions begin at the age of 14, y'all. Like 14, like, like think about, think about what we were doing, right? At the age of 14, right? And to think that a lot of people are experiencing, you know, mental health issues, even at that early age, just so we can understand that, again, this isn't something that just affects, you know, when you get out of college or when you hit 18 or when you hit out, when you get out your house, this is something, you know, you're in middle school and 14 is middle school age. And, and you're dealing with a lot of these stresses that I'm almost sure you're not prepared to deal with. Suicide, we talk about suicide a lot here, is a temple leading cause of death here in the United States. And we know about 90% of those who suffer from suicide have some form of mental health uh, illness kind of associated with it, right? So again, this isn't, uh, you know, a Unfortunately, this isn't a, a one-off thing, right? A lot of people suffer from mental health-related issues, and it really is a, a big problem in, in, in that regards, right? So, uh, Dr. Joy, when we talk about like mental health and you know the fact that yes, they 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 do say, you know what, let's focus a whole month on it, right? Like, what does that mean for you, especially for your practice as you were kind of coming up along the ranks? Yeah, I think it's really important, like you said, Dr. Barry, that we continue to have this conversations not only in May but you know, kind of all year long, because when you 
you look at those numbers, it's very likely that you or somebody in your life has struggled with maybe a mental illness in your lives or that you will, right? And so I think a part of what happens during Mental Health Awareness Month is that we see lots of conversations about like symptoms and signs to be aware of, which I think is really important because a lot of times people like the person who is struggling is not the first person who recognizes something's going on, right? A lot of times it is the people in our lives who will say, hey, something's going on. You know, she doesn't seem like herself or, you know, it seems like something's different there. And so I do think it's important for people to kind of have a general awareness of like the signs and symptoms of mental illness so that they can intervene in other people's lives or can recognize it for themselves if it comes to that. So when, when we talk about mental health and just making sure we're kind of recognizing it, what are some of the things that that, that kind of help kind of motivate you, right? Especially because as, as a champion of mental health in, in the position that you're in, like what, what have been some of the biggest motivators and say like, hey, guys, we need to wake up, especially when we talk about therapy for Black girls, like we need to wake up and this is really an issue that everyone needs to be like all hands on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like I mentioned in the beginning, you know, because a lot of my background has been in working on in college counseling centers, I often will be working with, you know, students when they see the first signs of this. Right. So a lot of times they're away from home. There have to be conversations with parents and other loved ones. And so I feel like that has given me a really unique vantage point about what this looks like and how it impacts so many different areas of your lives. And so I do think it is important to, you know, like I said, to recognize these signs and symptoms as early as you can so that you can get the help that you need. I mean, a lot of times, especially for Black women, the people are, you know, kind of walking around in silence and really struggling and either don't know that they are struggling with a mental health concern or they don't want to admit it to themselves. And so, you know, especially with the work that I do for Therapy for Black Girls, that's why it's really important for me to make sure that we're having these kinds of conversations and to make sure that people know it's okay to reach out for help if you feel like you're struggling. And, and kind of going, you know, kind of segueing right on that when we talk about reaching out for help and, you know, someone kind of makes that that connection. Hey, you know what? I think I have a problem and I need some assistance, right? When when we hear the word therapy, right, especially in the, in the general kind of public sort of thing, right? What does that kind of mean, right? Because I, I think when we hear therapy, I can, it, it mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. And I don't know that it's always a positive connotation, right? Because <laughs> usually I think we think about a therapist when there is a crisis, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. somebody huh. is maybe struggling with like severe depression or they're really anxious or maybe they're hearing things or they feel suicidal. Like I think in those situations, we readily kind of think about a therapist. But I also like to encourage people to think about the fact that a therapist is not just for a crisis situation. In many cases, it actually can prevent a crisis situation if you talk to a therapist before we get to the crisis. You know, so at the first signs that you're seeing, you know, something's off with your sleep or something's different with your appetite or you're not enjoying things like you used to or whatever, it just kind of feels a a little different, that can be a great reason to go and talk with a therapist. And a therapist can also just give you great information and help you talk through things that are just good for your own personal development. So there are very few things that you couldn't just talk with a therapist about that would likely improve some area of your life. Oh, and I love that listener community. Like, I, I hope y'all caught that word prevention, right? Like, again, we stress it a lot, right? When we talk about blood pressure, wellness, when we, we, we stress prevention a lot when it comes to the medical, right? But like, again, I want us to really take this show and make sure that we're understanding that our mental health is extremely important. Like Dr. Joy says, preventively, you should be going to see a therapist before you get to that point, right? But again, before you come to see Dr. Barry, right? Before you get the heart attack, hopefully I can give you some blood pressure medication, right? And before you have that mental health breakdown, hopefully you can see a therapist to try to prevent that. So I love, you know, I love that drive and that goal of prevention, prevention that even stems into the, the therapy world. And I, I know, I know you get this all the time, right? Like what are some of these, the common misconceptions kind of really associated negatively and maybe even positively with therapy, right? Like what are some of the issues that you kind of have to, the hurdles that you have to kind of go over to get someone to really accept? Yeah, that's a great question, Dr. Barry. So one of the biggest ones we just talked about, which is the idea that you only see a therapist in crisis. That's one of the big ones. Another one is, well, how is talking to a therapist different than talking to my friend, right? Like I have friends who can listen to me. And of course, your friends may be great and they can be helpful and supportive, but your friends are biased also, right? So they have all this history of 
about you. They know all this stuff about you, as opposed to a therapist who is an objective party who only sees you in their office. That's why you don't hang out with your therapist on the weekends and you don't go play golf with your therapist. The whole reason that there are those boundaries around the therapeutic relationship is so that you can come into the therapist's office and say things that you likely would not tell your friends because of judgment or, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, in some ways it is like a conversation with your friend, but in a lot of ways it's very different because we are not in any other area of your life. And we're also bound by confidentiality, right? So how many times have you had the experience of talking to a friend and you tell them don't tell, but then they tell your other best friend anyway, (laughs) right? You know, that's not going to happen with your therapist, you know, so that's a huge part of our ethical guidelines and our license to protect clients is that we don't talk about what's going on in the office with our with our clients unless it's to keep them safe or keep someone else safe. So the confidentiality piece, I think, is also huge. Another big misconception I've heard about therapy, and I think this one is particular to like the Black community, is that if you're struggling with a mental illness, that means that you don't have a strong enough faith relationship or you're not believing in Uh-oh. God enough. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got we to gotta <laughs> step on a few toes here, maybe. But, you know, but that does come up a lot. And, you know, I'm really encouraged to see so many congregations and faith communities now bringing therapists in to talk to their congregations about how therapy is different from prayer. The whole idea that they don't have to be mutually exclusive. Like you can still talk to your pastor and pray and do all of those things and talk with a therapist. So I'm glad to see that there has been some movement of people realizing that it's not that you don't believe in God enough or that you have a a weak faith relationship. Mental illness is an illness just like anything else. So, you know, when people, you know, get diagnosed with cancer, you don't typically hear people say like, oh, if she would have just prayed harder, you know, she might not have gotten cancer. But you do hear those kinds of things about mental illness. And so I really want people to kind of divorce themselves of that belief that mental illness has anything to do with your faith relationship. Oh, I love that. And yeah, you definitely, you touched on, you touched on a lot of points um, there. One where I, I think where your friends become that that family counselor, right? Like where like a lot of people are placing a lot of burden and sometimes your friends don't even want that burden, right? Like you guys are placing a lot of burden and stress when you tell your problems to your friends and family members, but they're not really even equipped to kind of deal with it, right? right. And, and I think that's why a lot of times they just like, oh, never go to somebody else because I can't be the only one sitting on this type of information. So I, I, I love that aspect of it. And then the course of faith, faith is one that always, um, you know, faith, faith always gets an interesting conversation to turn about because because again, you, you have that dichotomy that where I, I'm not even sure why it's a dichotomy where they feel like like if, if you, you take care of your mental health for some reason, your faith isn't as strong. Like, I'm, I'm not sure where that came from, but it, it's definitely there, definitely strong. And do you find that to be more, and again, of course, I'm biased because I, I take care of a lot of, you know, uh, black families, right? So do you find that more on in, in black families as far as like the religion and mental health yeah. sometimes bumping hits? Yeah, for sure. That definitely has been my experience as well is that I definitely hear that more in communities of color then I hear that, you know, like in white families. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So, so we talked about, you know, the thing that we want people to kind of race out of the memory when we talk about therapy, like, but well, obviously the, the benefits clearly outweigh, right? Like, so what, what are some of your, the most common benefits that you tend to see, you know, your patients really experience when they first start and really accept the process? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of that really depends on like what they're coming in for, but some of, some of the things that you can expect are maybe better relationships with other people in your lives. But the the downside, though, is sometimes you lose relationships that likely weren't very healthy for you in the first place because you learn maybe, uh oh, Uh -oh. (laughs) (laughs) your listeners going to be writing me all kind of emails. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, you learn things like assertiveness and setting boundaries. And then when you go and practice that in your life, then people who, you know, are invested in you not having boundaries get mad with you, right? So you may lose that relationship, but it's very likely that that relationship wasn't a healthy one or reciprocal for you anyway. So that is a caution that sometimes you learn things in therapy and then you go and practice it and then it results in maybe you losing relationships or the relationships change. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you're coming in for something like depression or anxiety, anxiety, typically working with a therapist who has specialization in those areas will result in a relief of some of those symptoms. So not that you may never be depressed again, but you will see likely a very significant decrease in those symptoms, maybe a decrease in the severity. If you're having panic attacks, there are things that your therapist can teach you about how to manage those panic attacks or helping you to recognize your triggers so that you don't experience the panic attacks as frequently. You know, just lots of different things. And like I said, it really kind of depends on 
what you're coming in for. Perfect, perfect. I love it. And we kind of already talked about, you know, like when you should see them. In, in your eyes, you feel like the sooner the better, right? If we had to surmise it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I don't think that there's any, because we're human, right? We're not perfect. There's always something going on in our lives that we would likely benefit from talking to an objective party about. And so, you know, talking with a therapist just about work stress or like how, you know, now I am the supervisor and how do I manage people who work under me in a way that feels fair? And like, there are lots of different reasons why you can talk with a therapist, but definitely if you notice anything going on, like changes in your behavior, the sooner the better to talk with a therapist is a great idea. So let, let's say I, I come to a decision where I, like I recognize, you know, something's going on. I'm not necessarily equipped to kind of handle it, right? Like, how do I, how do I go to look for a therapist and what should I look for? Mm -hmm. That's another great question. And I think a lot of people get kind of stumped here because I think there are a lot of, a lot of options. I mean, it isn't necessarily like your PCP, right? Like, you know, most primary care doctors like treat the same kinds of things. And so as long as you probably like their bedside manner and it may be relatively close to your home or work, then it's probably fine, right? But your therapist is a different kind of a relationship. And so more than like, your PCP, you really want to make sure that you actually kind of like this person because you're likely going to be sharing some very intimate information with them. I mean, you know, they're going to kind of be getting all in your business and asking you all kinds of questions that you likely have not been asked before. So you do want to try to find somebody that you you know, that you think you would feel comfortable talking to. I also think it's really important that you find a therapist who has specialization in the thing that you are coming in for. So you may find, so there are lots of different directories. You know, like I mentioned, I have a directory on my website that is primarily targeted to Black women and girls who are looking for a therapist. There are tons of different ones, Psychology Today, Open Path Collective, Good Therapy, like there are lots of different directories. And so you do want to make sure that you find somebody, like I said, who has a specialization in what you're looking for. So you may find somebody who looks like they're, you know, maybe really friendly or you've heard them on a podcast like this. And it's like, oh, OK, I think I might enjoy talking with them. But then you realize they don't actually have a specialization in what you need. then that's likely not going to be a really good turnout for you, because while most therapists are trained in kind of general kinds of things, some of us do do additional specializations and different trainings and certifications in certain areas. And so you want to try to find the therapist who, one, you would feel comfortable talking with, but also has a good expertise in the thing that's bringing you into therapy. I love it. And, and I think that's very important, especially when, when we talk about, like, again, especially if you're here in some health insurance, you know, your PCP is chosen for you. Right. right. The, the, the option of choosing is kind of like, like, oh, no, this is the person, the one we're going to make you go to. And some people just kind of accept it. And, yeah. and understanding that you need to have a great, not even a good relationship, some, you know, sometimes a great relationship before you embark on such a journey, which, and, and I always, I always talk about, especially when we talk about mental health, is that it really is a journey, right? There isn't really a point A to point B, like, all right, let me get off here and then I'm good to go. A lot of times it is something that you have to kind of continuously work on, continuously improve, continuously get better. And if you fall off, like, all right, I, I know what I need to do. So I definitely I am ecstatic about some of those points because, you know, really trusting a person is extremely, uh, extremely beneficial, yeah. especially if you're going to tell them, you know, the things that, you know, cause you hurt, the things that cause you pain and, and everything else that as a as a primary care physician, I unfortunately, and I guess fortunately, unfortunately, you know, I had patients who trusted me enough to at least get to that point. But even me, I'd be like, oh, like, hey, you know what? Yeah, you know, I think you might need to actually see a therapist. And not that I don't emphasize with what you're going through, but like, I can't really, you know, give you the, the advice that I, I think you're going to need in my 15 to 20 minute session. Right. And you mentioned about health insurance, Dr. Barry, and I forgot to mention that. So if you think that you're going to want to use your health insurance to see a therapist, you can probably save yourself a lot of time and frustration by getting a list of therapists who are covered by your insurance plan from your insurance company. Because sometimes, you know, clients will find a therapist that they really enjoy. They think, you know, they have a great specialization and only to realize that they don't actually accept their insurance, which which can be really frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, so getting a list from your insurance company to kind of start that search may be a really good idea as well. Oh, that's perfect. And, and again, thanks for, you know, just kind of really guiding us through a process that I don't think a lot of people, unfortunately, experience, especially because we said the numbers, a lot of people probably should experience it. And, you know, whether they're, it's be, they're being stopped off and saying like, hey, let me just go to my PCP, tell my PCP my problems and they kind of go and they don't get referred up like I feel like they should. And 
more often. So again, thank you for walking us through that process of, you know, what is therapy? You know, some bad things, some good things. And then uh, most importantly, like, how do I look for a good one? Now, so now that we segue into how do we look for a good one, right? We, we, let's, we got to talk about therapy for black girls. And, and then, and let me just kind of give, give my soapbox, right? When I, cause I, cause I think I discovered you a few years ago. And one, I was, I was so infatuated, so interested, right? Because I was like, oh, this is a person who recognizes such a need. And, and it is a need, right? And it's sometimes that scares people away because they feel like, oh, if I only focus on population, right, then what about the others? And and I always say, especially in the business standpoint, right, if you're trying to, you know, serve everybody, you're not serving anybody. So when, when we talk about therapy for black girls and just that motivation behind it, what made you realize I say, you know what, like, this is it, right? These are the people who, like, I need to go like 150% for. Yeah. So I feel like it really was just an extension of what I was already doing anyway. So I, so therapy for black girls started as a block. I started it in 2014 after watching the Black Girls Rock Award show on BET. It was just such a cool... I love that show too. (laughs) Yeah. It like hype. I was like, yes. Right, exactly. And you could just feel the energy even through the TV screen. And so I was like, oh, is there a way I could create something like this that gave people the same kind of energy around mental health? Um, So it started as a blog with me just kind of like blogging about topic that I thought would be interesting to Black women and girls. So like I started with a blog about how to find a therapist and what is your support system look like? Like just those kinds of like general mental health kinds of things. But it really, like I said, is an extension of what I was already doing because every time I worked at a different college counseling center, I would always be doing outreaches and groups with the Black women on campus. So a lot of my career has also been working on predominantly white campuses. And so I noticed that, you know, the Black students weren't necessarily coming into the counseling center at the same rates as their peers. And so I would go out to the Multicultural Student Center or to the sororities or whatever and say, hey, let's do these groups. Like, let me see what's going on with y'all. How can we kind of make sure that we are kind of in contact, that you know the resources are here and where to reach out to if you need some help. So I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, so I was already kind of doing therapy for Black girls before therapy for Black girls ever became a thing. And really the blog just kind of, you know, gave me a way to kind of talk to Black women and girls who were beyond my campus. So it started as a blog, but now includes, like I said, the therapist directory that has over 1,300 therapists in it, as well as a weekly podcast that comes out every Wednesday that has topics about all kinds of things relevant to Black women and girls. Now, when when we, when you first started, were there like any particular challenges, like like focusing on getting you know Black women and focusing on talking about health? And the reason why I ask that because I know as as an outpatient physician and even an inpatient physician, I, I know I, I I see the difference in a person's eyes right when I walk in and they're also Black, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's I see, I see like they just kind of light up. They open like they, it's almost like they visually open up and like they're just mm-hmm. more relaxed. Yeah. Doing it. But I know that's in the medical world. Right. And I always feel like when it comes to talking about mental health, there's a little bit of barrier. Did you find that a little bit easier because you are a black woman and going to black women and saying, hey, this is important, too? Yeah, I I got nothing but excitement from black women when I would tell them about the blog. Like I would get like, oh, yes, that's needed. You know, that kind of thing. So but I know the feeling that you're talking about, because I think what that is, is really a feeling of I'm going to be seen and heard by this person. Person, right. Like even though, you know, blackness is not monolithic. Right. Like you as a black man, even Maria as a black woman is different from me as a black woman. You know, like we all have different experiences, but I think that there is a sense of there not being some things that I won't have to understand. There are some things that you're just going to get because of our shared cultural language. And so I think that lighting up that you see in that, you know, maybe relaxing and I'm not as tense is because they feel like, OK, I won't have to do some of that explaining that I might have to do if this was not a black provider. But yeah, like overall, I think people have just been really excited and supportive about therapy for black girls, which is, you know, why it has kind of taken off in the way that it has. And when we say take it off, especially because you say you started as a blog and Mm -hmm. you you were even writing like, hey, like this is how you should find one. What kind of pushed you to say like, oh, you know what? Like maybe I should have my own, you know, like location because they're already coming to me to read about therapy and mental health topics. But maybe I should have this like directory. Like what 
what was the motivation? Because I think that's even a different step. Were you always kind of business minded or was it just like, yeah, you know what, maybe like this would be a place that people can come to and maybe they can find someone that's local in their area. <laughs> you know, Dr. Barry, I wish I could say that I was really business minded, but so much <laughs> of this has really just been about me paying attention to my audience and having the kinds of conversations with Black women that I was always having. You know, so the directory started because I kept seeing people on social media, primarily Twitter, because that's where I spend a lot of time saying like, hey, I'd love to find a Black therapist. Does anybody have a recommendation for a Black woman therapist? And I kept seeing those conversations. And I was like, well, surely there has to be a way for us to kind of put something like this together, right? So I just kind of put a call out on social media and said, hey, if you're a Black woman who's had a great experience with a therapist, nominate them and I will kind of compile all the information. And that way, other Black women may be able to find therapists who other Black women have had good experiences with. And so that was in December of 2016. It really just started as a Google Doc. And I think by the end of that year, I had like 90 therapists in the directory. And like I said, now they're over 1,300. And the reason why I love that is because I think a lot of times, especially in the general public, I don't think people realize like how many professionals are out there that can cater to our needs. Mm-hmm. So when you put it all in one area, you're like, oh my God, it's 90 of y'all? Like, it's, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that like that probably drew some people back. People were like, oh, okay, I didn't know. Okay, all right. All right. I, I didn't know we were out here. And, it, and it's crazy because I think mental health is one of those things that gets talked about, but for some reason doesn't get talked about in, in like that same hand. And when you see like, oh, I can go to one area and, you know, to search by, like, for example, let, let's walk us through, like if we were on your site right now, right? Like, and we, and I wanted to find someone and like, like, is the, is the process that easy? Like, am I just click and click and then boom, someone like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in some ways it is easy, in some ways it's not. So, you know, like I said, the process of finding a therapist is probably going to be a little more involved than like finding a primary care doctor because you do want to find somebody who has a specialization in whatever you need. But if you were on the website and you wanted to search like by your area code and your insurance, you could just type in your area code and then filter by insurance. And then the therapists who are in your area who accept that insurance would pop up. And then that at least makes it a little smaller for you to kind of go through those profiles and say, okay, this person feels like they might be a good fit. This person, not so much. And then you can kind of narrow down your list like that. No, I love it. So again, let's learn community. I hope you're here. So it's not, it's again, not, not I, I know it was like uplift, like rocket science, but it's not rocket science, right? You should be able, if you're looking, right? If you're looking, you should be able to find someone in your area who can help service your needs. Because again, remember, this is Mental Health Awareness Month, right? We're, we're putting it out on Front Street that every, everywhere, even if you don't think you got a problem, but you may think like, oh, I could benefit. Like there's possibility that you could possibly benefit. Like I said, prevention is key, even when it comes to, to mental health. And then like, said from that you kind of springboarded and now you have a podcast as well again kind of you know champion the, the call of mental health especially in black women and girls so again absolutely love everything that you're doing thank you so, i do want to go back to one of your points dr Barry. Oh, well, oh, yes i don't want us to make it seem as if like therapists are like plentiful and mm-hmm. like anybody can see them right because the truth of it is that there are still a lot of barriers that might make it difficult for people to get in with therapists you know so sometimes you know like i said some Sometimes you will find therapists who are not like accepted on your insurance plan. I mean, that can be for lots of different reasons. You know, sometimes finances make it difficult to see a therapist. Unfortunately, you know, kind of across the nation, lots of like community mental health agencies have either closed or are so overrun with with people wanting the services that they are like at a wait list. So there are still lots of reasons why it may be difficult for people to get in to see a therapist if they want to. But my hope is that the directory makes it a little little easier for people to kind of get connected with a therapist who they might want to see. I mean, I, de- I definitely agree because it, it, like you said, it's, it, it's there, especially because I'm thinking low, like, and I'm fortunate, I'm in South Florida, right? So I'm almost sure like I'm gonna find somebody in South Florida who does it right. But imagine if you're, you're in a town, you're in a state, you know, that, that isn't plentiful. And it, so it, it could be very daunting just to even look to see like, Hey, like I need to find someone, but again, hopefully we can, you know, kind of, you know, channel people to at least start with your director because you got to start somewhere, right? Like you got to right. start somewhere. You got to look somewhere. You got to be able to make that first step and says, yes, I have an issue and I want someone to help take care of it. Right. 
So, you know, kind of kind of piggybacking off the the therapy for black girls directory, the podcast and every and member lesson community, all of these things will be in the show notes. So uh, you'll have you'll get direct links to all of this. Is there any other services that you offer? Or is that really the main two things right now? Or like, are you doing any books, any courses and speaking like where can where can people find you, talk to you, listen to you and everything from that standpoint? Yeah, so those are the main two things, but I do have other things going on. So my clinical specialty, I do still have a small practice. It's helping women to recover from breakups. And so out of that work, I've also developed a workbook for people who are struggling with breakups. It's called Questions That Need Answers After the Breakup. So I also have that workbook available. I also developed an affirmation, like a guided affirmation track, which I love. So it's kind of like an affirmation set to music. And it's particularly for women who feel like their life doesn't look Look like what they thought it would look like right now. Like all these questions about like, why am I not partnered? And why don't I have kids? And why don't I have the job that I thought I would love? Uh-huh. That affirmation track is specifically for them. I and mean, I'm working on a second one too. Uh, that'll be released soon. I and mean, I also have something called the Yellow Couch Collective. So, you know, we have a large social media community surrounding like the podcast and all of the work that we do. And I really wanted a place that was like a smaller, more intimate group for people to really take the concepts from the podcast and take it to the next level. So that group is called the Yellow Couch Collective. I mean, it is a membership program for people who listen to the podcast and really want to do some work surrounding the topics that we're talking about. So all of that you can find on the therapyforblackgirls.com website. But those are the other things that I have going on as well as speaking. So I do have, I typically have at least one or two speaking gigs every month related to like mental health and Black women. I oh, love it. Love it. Again, I, again, let's make it like I told you guys in the intro, this is a an amazing person. Like I said, I've been following for a few years. I've been, I've been, I've been lucky enough. I've been able to piggyback the friendship by association now because my wife's a friend of hers. So like I'm, <laughs> like I'm right in there. <laughs> So before we let you go, again, we, we talked about, so we know Therapy for Black Girls, web, the website, again, links will all be in the show notes. Is that like the main way like people contact you? And you said you, you're on Twitter a lot too. Is that, mm-hmm. what's, what's your social media handles on there? Yeah. So my personal social media handles across the board are at Hello Dr. Joy, H-E-L-L-O-D-R-J-O-Y. And then you can find the Therapy for Black Girls handles. They are Therapy for Black Girls on both Instagram and Facebook and it's Therapy for for the number four B girls on Twitter. Oh, I love it. And before we let you go, last question, how can what you do or how does what you do help empower women to take really better control of their mental health? Yeah, I think that a large part of what we do is giving women the language they need to kind of describe what's going on with them and to help critically think through things that they may want to better in their lives. Absolutely amazing. Amazing podcast, of course, you know, no, no surprises because we got Dr. Joy on the show. So no surprise that was an amazing podcast. Podcast. Again, thank you for uh, taking the time to really, you know, get our lunch and learn community together when it comes to mental health and when it comes to the awareness and just kind of recognizing like, hey, you guys should be seeing this therapist sooner rather than later. So again, thanks for everything you've been doing. Thank you, Dr. Barry. Thank you for getting to the end of the show. I am your host, Dr. Barry Pierre, host of the Lunch Learn with Dr. Barry. And this is another amazing episode that we like to bring to you week after week on betterment of empowering yourself for better health today. If you have not had a chance, please go ahead and subscribe to the show if this is your first time listening. If you already listen and you've already subscribed, make sure to leave me a five-star review because your support is absolutely important in keeping the show moving as it is. And if you have not had a chance and you want to check out today's show notes, always head over to lunchlearnpod.com. That is lunch learn pod all in one word dot com and you can get the access to my show notes for every single episode but especially especially the one you just listened to and i'm gonna see you guys next week you guys be blessed bye